mobile car nation like when we are all together. Welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Regulatory Committee. The agenda papers and other relevant information for this meeting are available for public viewing on the Herefordshire Council website. Please remember your words and actions should be chosen carefully and members are reminded that speeches are limited to three minutes. The Council is streaming this me meeting live on Herefordshire Council YouTube channel and also making a recording. The recording will be available via the Council's website shortly after the meeting has concluded. Other attendees are permitted to film, photograph and record the meeting provided that it does not disrupt the business of the meeting. If you do not wish to be filmed or photographed, please identify yourself so that anyone who intends to record the meeting can be made aware. To ensure that the recording quality is maintained, could member speak as clearly as possible and keep background noise to a minimum, and ensure that mobile phones and other devices are turned to silent. Welcome to all those in attendance. Welcome to Councillor Norman and Watson as new members of the committee. I shall ask Mr. Bishop to introduce the officers. Morning, Chairman. Morning, members. Um, Welcome, it's nice to have you back in the room again um, after our short short break recently. Um, today we have um, four, four applications for your consideration and the first one is uh, Barnes of Kingsland, South of Longford and Adam Lewis will present that application. Item number seven is Priory from Stoke Prior, Ollie Jones will present that with Chairman. Item number eight, uh, 33 Burden Drive, Varta Street, Simon Rowles will present that one. And item 9, 13 The Crown Subsidy, Mr. Emily Brooks. We also have in attendance chairman uh, remotely uh, the legal advisor for the committee today, Dawn Evans, and the highways officer, Katie Jones. Thank you. Welcome back to Ms. Evans, who's, uh, sorry. Welcome back to Ms. Evans, who's uh, forthright and uh, thorough uh, observations for people uh, are most useful in this case. Sorry, you can't hear. It's not working. I, I, I'm right up against it. <laughs> you need to be. You need to be. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, mics are a little more sensitive. Medium distance left. Right. Um, we have received um, apologies from Councillor Polly Andrews and Mark, Councillors Mark Milmore. Are there any other apologies? Councillor Graham Jones. Substitutes. We have the following substitutes Councillor Kevin Tillard for Councillor Polly Andrews and Councillor Anne Marie Provert for Councillor Mark Milmore. I believe that's the price for Mr. Jones. That's the Jones. Right. Anything else? No. Please indicate if you wish to declare an interest, and we'll call each councillor in turn. Does anyone wish to declare an interest? Oh, councillor Mill was hovering. But, uh, not. So there are none, no declarations of interest. To confirm the meeting, the minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of November 21. No matters of accuracy have been notified to the monetary guards. Are the minutes of the meeting of the, uh, November 17th, 21 approved? Please raise your hands to indicate if they are. Okay. And abstentions. That is covered. Sorry, can people still say they can't hear you? Still can't hear you. You can't quite say to the phone. You're not getting to my phone. Can we turn it off? Sure. It's working very close to your mouth. 
I'll turn off the heating. That might be that might be interfering with the heating. No, it isn't heating. Give a technique. Wait, you try to close your mouth. They can hear you. What? There's about that much. That you need to be in that. Yeah. All right. Oh. Yes. Okay. 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 I have no no announcements under the five. Five. Number six, planning application. The application will be uh, can I request that the public speak <laughs> Can I request that the public speakers present physically for the agenda item six join the meeting? Mrs. Harrison Kingsland and Mrs. Pothery, who has replaced Mrs. Sharp Smith, a local resident, and Mr. Hicks, the applicant's agent. Um, take their seats at the public participation. Thank you. Before us is Barnes of Kingsland, south of Longford, Leominster, Herefordshire. Proposed conversion of three agricultural buildings to form two dwellings and garaging with associated landscaping and infrastructure. The officer's presentation, Mr. Lewis. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just check that's working clear. Yeah. Good. Uh, uh, yes, as uh, the Chair mentioned, uh, the application is for uh, seeking full planning permission for the conversion. Of a range of agricultural buildings to two dwellings. Uh, the application relates to a site just outside of the village of Kingsland, approximately 300 metres to the southeast of the village, accessed by a track from Longford Road and Custody Road Star. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the slide above shows the relationship of the site to Kingsland. The topography of the landscape in this area is generally flat, overlined by large field enclosures with the access track being lined with mature hedgerows and a number of trees subject to preservation orders. The entirety of the site is within the Kingsland Conservation Area. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as members will have seen at the visit yesterday, at the end of the track there's a small cluster of agricultural buildings which are in varying states of repair and varying age. As shown on the plan above, they're broadly arranged around a, a central yard, and for ease of reference in this presentation, they'll be referred to as barns one, two, and three as it on the plans. Next slide, please. Barn one is a traditional timber frame building. The main element of the barn is two story and believed to be of 19th century origins, whilst the single story elements to the north are later additions. It's proposed to convert this building into a four bedroom dwelling. Uh, part of the lean-to structures to the north will be demolished as part of this, as you can see in the elevation plans. Next slide, please. Barn 2 is a modern steel frame building. It has a concrete floor slab and walls formed concrete block with corrugated sheeting above. It's proposed to convert this building to a three-bedroom dwelling. Next slide, please. Barn 3 is a monopic structure which has elements of both steel and timber framing. The west, por west portion of the building is in a poor state of repair. And it's proposed to partially demolish this, retaining the eastern bays as garaging to barn one. The next slide, please. Uh, this show, slide shows the proposed site layout plan and the landscaping strategy. Uh, the existing track from the north will be realigned to provide a central entry point, and new hedgerows would be established to find curtilages. Uh, turning to the appraisal, uh, the application is to be determined in accordance with the development plan that comprises the core strategy in the King's and the neighbourhood plan here. Uh, the ability to demonstrate a five-year supply of housing is such that the policies of this plan track tra full weight. Kingsland is a settlement identified by RA2 as being an appropriate location for new housing. Policy KNDP2 of the NDP sets out that new housing will be permitted where it is located within the defined settlement boundary of the village in the first instance. The site here is acknowledged as being outside the settlement boundary. At its closest point, this is 300 metres away to the north. The proposal hence represents development within the open countryside. However, bullet D of policy KNDP2 states that new housing in such locations should be exceptional and considered in accordance with policy RA3. 
RE3 sets out a list of circumstances in which new development in the countryside may be supported. One of these is where it would entail the sustainable reuse of redundant rural buildings, where it's sort of called with RE5, and lead to enhancement of the building <coughs> setting. RE5 sets out a criteria-based approach to the assessment of conversion, scheme, of conversion schemes, which is set out in full in the officer's report. Officers have assessed the proposal with regards to these criteria, and in summary would advise that no conflict has been identified. It is considered that the scheme as a whole meets the relevant requirements of policy, and also accords with RE3 insofar as an enhancement to the setting of the building would be achieved through the demolition of these substandard structures, the removal of large areas of concrete hard standing, and extensive new landscaping. Uh, next slide, please. Um, it is, uh, however, considered worthwhile to note as a point of contention that the policy tests under RA5 that relate to the suitability of buildings to be converted. In this sense, uh, it is noted that the parish council have raised concerns about this as local residents, uh, stating that the buildings are not capable of burn by conversion and should instead be assessed as new builds. Uh, members should be aware, however, that the application is supported by a structural engineer's report that finds the, the buildings to be of permanent and substantial construction, lending themselves fairly readily to residential use without the need for substantial rebuilding. The Council's own building surveyors also independ uh, independently reviewed this report and came to <coughs> conclusions. Officers have no doubt, to ground, no doubt grounds to doubt the veracity of either of these professional viewpoints and thus consider the proposals represent a conversion in accordance with the requirements of RA5. Next slide, please. Um, in assessing the design of the proposal, uh, RA5 broadly requires the proposal respect the character and significance of the building. That's further supported by policy SD1 and KNDP6. In terms of reflecting local character and distinctiveness, KNDP4 and 5 are also of note uh, to, as far as they seek to ensure that historic and traditional rural, rural buildings in the parish are conserved. With regards to Barn 1, although it's not subject to any formal designations, this is considered to be a non-designated heritage asset. As can be seen on the images above, the core of the barn comprises a traditional timber frame that has historic significance on account of its age and the quality of the surviving fabric. The MPPF clarifies the effect of development on non-designated heritage assets such as this should be taken into account. Broadly speaking, the design of the proposal is considered to respect the character of both barns. With regards to barn one, the design is considered to be sympathetic to its traditional character and respectful of its significance. No objections have been received from the historic buildings officer, and indeed she comments that the scheme would be beneficial insofar as it would secure the preservation of the building. In terms of Barn 2, this uh, scheme here generally respects the agrarian character of the building and maintains its simple form. Taken together, therefore, it's not considered there's any conflict as a result of the design, and the condition is recommended to remove development rights so that future extensions and alterations can be adequately controlled. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of the wider landscape setting, the site is rural in character and is within the Kings and Conservation Area. The Council therefore has additional duties to pay special attention to preserving or enhancing its character and appearance. <coughs> These duties are manifested in the plan through a number of policies that broadly require that schemes respond to context and they seek to preserve designated landscapes. Policy 6 of the NDP is particularly pertinent as it states that new development will only be permitted uh, in the Conservation Area where it preserves or enhances its character and does not adversely affect the significance of heritage assets. Uh, as members would have observed yesterday, the site is located towards the periphery of the conservation area in an area that is rural in character. However, given the relative proximity to Kingsland, it has a clear visual relationship with the built-up part of the village and some of the heritage assets found therein. This is shown on the slide above, which is a key viewpoint of the site from the footpath to the southeast, where the barns are viewed in the foreground against the backdrop of the Grade 1 Biscuit Church. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the image on the slide above is taken from the opposite direction, looking towards the barns from the public, public footpath near the grounds of the church. From this direction, the barns are less prominent within the landscape, however, the roof of barn one is, in particular remains clearly visible. Uh, when we come to assess this impact, uh, officers think it's considered to rec uh, it is important to recognise that the scheme entails the conversion of existing buildings that are already established features within the landscape. It's not proposed to erect any new buildings on the site, and there would actually be an overall reduction in built form as a result of the demolition of the substandard structures and the removal of areas of concrete hard standing. From key viewpoints and long-range vistas, therefore, the massing and visual impact of the proposals would either be maintained as it is or reduced, with the prominence of the buildings being reduced further by new landscape planting and also through appropriate conditions uh, to secure materials to ensure the buildings assimilate into the landscape. 
The specialist advice received from the historic buildings officer advises that the scheme could, would cause minimal impact on the conservation area and hence no impact objectives have been offered. However, in my view, it must be acknowledged that the scheme would introduce the residential use into part of the conservation area that's currently devoid of such features. There would therefore be a degree of domestication in character of the immediate locale, which, uh, must, which would lead to some uh, minor localised harm to the rurality of this part of the conservation area. That harm must be weighed in the balance by yourself as decision makers. With regards to listed buildings, there are a number of these found in the wider locality, including the Grade 1 ch uh, listed Church of St. Michael, the Grade 2 Stark Kingsland House, and a number of Grade 2 listed buildings on the B4360. The nature of the scheme, however, and the significant dream of degree of separation is such that it is considered the proposal would have no demonstrable impact on the setting of any listed building in a manner that's harmful to its significance. The Council of Historic Building Officer offers no objection in this regard, and hence there is no harm to listed buildings identified. Uh, the harm that has been identified to the conservation area, as mentioned, is considered to be minor and falls at the very end, lower end of the, lower than, of the less than substantial spectrum. The MPPF requires that this harm should be weighed against the public benefits of the scheme. In this case, it has been identified that Barb 1 has significance as a non-designated heritage asset. The nature of the building is clearly such that it is no longer suitable for use as part of modern agricultural practices, and in light of this functional redundancy, the proposal scheme would secure a viable new use for the bar, which ensures that its is longer term conservation is, is secured. The preservation of a non designated heritage asset in this manner is a tangible benefit in favour of the scheme and is considered to publicly to demonstrably outweigh the very limited harm to be found. Accordingly, the tests prescribed, prescribed by the NPPF are passed, and there's no conflict found with the heritage policies that found. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, moving on to other person matters, the sites within the River Lug catchment where the conservation habitats and species regulations are applicable. Members will be aware that the council could only grant permission in the new development in these areas where it can be shown with the certainty to have a mutual impact on the lug. Uh, foul water from the development will be managed through the use of a package treatment plant with discharge to a treated discharge to a drainage mound. Surface water will be managed through a shallow infiltration system and a series of rain gardens within the curtains of dwellings as indicated by the plans currently on the screen. The Council's land drainage engineer has confirmed that these arrangements are policy compliant. And I've also advised that the drainage scheme satisfies the criteria within the Council's position statement that allows the conclusion to be drawn that there is no pathway for the development to have an impact on the River Lug. The Council's uh, ecologist has drawn the same conclusions in their assessment, and Natural England, as the relevant statutory consultee, have offered no objections to the scheme on these grounds. It can therefore be concluded that the scheme adequately safeguards the Lug and the River YSCC. And it's hence policy compliant with the in other courts with the habitat regs. Uh, in terms of other material considerations, the application has been duly assessed, no policy competence has been found. It's supported by an ecology survey which has identified evidence of bat roosting activity within the timber barn. Conditions are recommended to secure optimal, uh, further optimal period surveys and mitigation before any works commences, uh, with the council's ecologists offering no objections for that reason. The existing access onto lock would be utilised. Uh, this offers good levels of visibility onto the public road and the associated track is suitable to support the use of subject to minor upgrade and the provision of a number of passing places. No adverse comments have been received from the transportation manager. Uh, with regards to trees and green infrastructure, the majority of the existing features on the site will be retained where they make a positive contribution to amenity, and there will be no detriment to the TPO trees that are found on the access road. Again, the council's tree officer has no objections to the scheme, subject to protection measures being secured by condition, and extensive new hedgerow and tree planting is proposed as part of the landscape landscaping strategy that will deliver net gains. To summarise, therefore, the proposal scheme is considered to accord with the requirements of policy KNDP2, RA3 and RA5, which allows for the principle of new housing in this location to be supported. The full details of the scheme have been assessed with regards to the development plan, and no material harm has been identified that suggests the scheme is not representative of sustainable <coughs> development. Approval is hence recommended, subject to a range of conditions. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Now we have the uh, uh, speakers, public speakers. We have a, one objector who's physically present, but first of all, I'll invite Mr. Harris from Kingsland Parish Council, who have three minutes. Good morning. I'm Councillor Richard Harris, representing Kingsland Parish Council. I live in the heart of the Kingsland village and the wife and I frequently walk the path along Pinsley Brook close to the site of the planning application. Clinton's Parish Council object to planning application for the following reasons. The condition of the barns is such that they would effectively 
be a new build and not a conversion of the existing buildings. As a new build, the proposal represents unjustified, unsustainable new urban residential development in an open countryside location outside the defined settlement boundary in Kingsland's neighbourhood development plan. It is contra contrary to policies SS1, SS7, SD1, RA2 and RA3 of Herefordshire's core strategy, together with Kingsland neighbourhood development plan policies KNDP1 and KNDP2. Development of the proposed site would adversely impact Kingsland's conservation area, which protects the fields and landscape towards St Michael's Church, the scheduled lot and Bailey and Longford. The proposal would result in material harm to the landscape and setting of the village. It would urbanise country <coughs> land and it unacceptably extend the built form into open countryside. In doing so, the development is contrary to policies SS6, LD1 of Herefordshire's core strategy and KNDP policies KNDP1 and KNDP4. The site is close to Pinsley Brook, which is a small tributary of the River Love. The brook is said to have many characteristics of a southern chalk stream and is reported to have a healthy population of trout. The proposed package treatment plant runs a risk of polluting the brook's watercourse with phosphates to the detriment of fish, local wildlife and well-being. Further, the risk of flooding and surface water runoff is considered to make the proposal unsustainable. The housing need has not been demonstrated. <coughs> Kingston's neighbourhood development plan has more than delivered on the guidance of the development in the core strategy. For these reasons, Kingsland Parish Council respectively urges that the, that the planning committee refuses the planning application. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Hicks. 14, 14 seconds to spare. Harris. Uh, Master Harris, Harris sorry. Um, now I'll invite um, Mrs. Pothelgry, uh, an objector, to speak for three minutes. This development uh, would erode the open character and appearance of this part of the conservation area and is contrary to policies in the core strategy and the neighbourhood plan. With Herefordshire having sufficient housing supply and Kingsland substantially exceeding required development, full weight should be given to the focus of Kingsland's plan on protecting the open countryside and the rural nature of the village. These farms do not meet RA5 requirements as they need major reconstruction, with the timber barn showing signs of substantial decay. The structural reports do not refer directly to proposals in the application and don't contain calculations. The site in an undeveloped part of Kingsland's conservation area has a low-key agricultural character recognised in the neighbourhood plan. Vividly described in the conservation area statement as these village associated fields with views through to the church are fine examples of the lowland setting of Kingsland. The adjacent footpath alongside Pinsley Brook is a much loved countryside walk for villagers, supporting the council's health and wellbeing strategy. It would be spoiled by this distinctly urban development. RA3 emphasizes the reuse of redundant buildings that, that should lead to the enhancement of their immediate setting. These farm buildings would become two houses with outbuildings, gardens, parking, fencing, and a sewerage mound, causing a significant negative change in character to the conservation area. The committee report acknowledges that it would not only harm the open aspect, but the setting of nearby listed buildings, especially the great two-starred Kingsland house and the church. The planning officer's observations seemingly contradict the landscape conservation concerns regarding the visibility of the buildings from the footpath and village. This would be further exacerbated by some proposed tree removals and cannot be addressed by the use of conditions or different materials. 
The isolated location is not sustainable for regular non-car based travel. Permanent human activity so close to Pinsley Brook would adversely affect wildlife and water quality. The sewerage system will always be a threat to the brook's water quality, regardless of the systems used. The planning officer states there will be limited harm to, harm to the conservation officer and that public benefits outweigh this harm. In reality, there are no discernible public benefits arising from this development. I'm afraid you've That's it. lost your Thank time. You. Thank you. And now, Mr. Hicks, or the, the agent for the applicant. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, members. Um, I speak on behalf of the applicants in support of their proposal to convert three redundant agricultural buildings to form two modestly scaled dwellings south of Longford. We endorse your officer's thorough assessment of the scheme and its clear recommendation for approval. We work constructively with the planning department throughout the pre-application and planning process to achieve what we consider to be a well-designed, small-scale barn conversion scheme, which would sympathetically repurpose a small cluster of disused agricultural buildings while preserving a non-designated heritage asset. It's really important to be clear from the outset that this is an application for the conversion of existing agricultural buildings and not new build residential development, for which wholly different planning policies apply. Two separate chance of structural engineers, as well as the council's own building control surveyor, have appraised the buildings and confirmed that in their professional opinions, the buildings are capable of conversion under the provisions for core strategy RA5. As members will be aware, RA5 does not prohibit structural works being carried out to make such buildings suitable for reuse as dwellings. Indeed, the council's own building control officer states that, and I quote, the steel portal frame building in particular offers a relatively simple conversion from a technical perspective. The timber frame barn presents a more complex process in terms of repair and upgrade, but from the evidence supplied, it appears to be suitable for conversion, with its current condition being similar to or better than many I've overseen in recent years. The council's historic building officer concurs with our assessment that the timber barn is a non-designated heritage asset worthy of preservation through sympathetic residential conversion. The ancillary buildings provide a sense of context to the heritage asset and therefore the grouping as a whole is worthy of conversion. Kingsland NDP places great weight on the importance of protecting the village's natural and historic environment. And while the, policy ha while the NDP has no specific policy for agricultural building conversions, a proposal such as this is in our view wholly aligned with the NDP's overarching ambitions. Members will be aware that the site lies within the River Love Catchment, and as such, the foul drainage strategy must meet Natural England's strict criteria to avoid additional phosphate entering the catchment. The painstaking drainage design work which has gone into this proposal over two years has involved detailed consultations with Natural England, the Council's ecology and drainage teams. The result is a sustainable drainage proposal which is supported by all statutory consultees, no mean feat. We hope that members will appreciate the care that has gone into developing this modest barn conversion scheme and the opportunity it presents to deliver policy compliant sustainable development which importantly would conserve a non-designated heritage asset and achieve nutrient neutrality. Thank you. Thank you Mr Hicks. Now the local ward member. Can you return to the public gallery please? Councillor Bowen is the local member for this item. He speaks and has the right to, uh, right to speak at the end of the, of the meeting. He is a member of this committee, but does not have a vote in this particular item. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you all of those who managed to get to the site and inspect the proposals as been laid out by our planning officer. And uh, thank you also to, to Mr. Lewis for his detailed report. Uh, which I think we all read with interest. Uh, there are various points arising, I think. The buildings themselves, well, yes, the, the little barn, uh, certainly the left, if you're looking at the barn from inside the courtyard, the left-hand side of the barn is quite a decent little building, uh, not very distinguished, but in a reasonable condition. Um, the right-hand structure attached to it, uh, which sort of seems to form part of it, is in fact a much more modern uh, piece of building and is of much less value altogether and is mostly softwood and rather, rather um, shall we say, well, tatty, I think is a kind word, with 
quite a lot of concrete involvement as well. Uh, the barn number two, the concrete and portal frame structure, is probably one of the more hideous buildings you'll see in Kingsland, perhaps the most hideous, um, unfortunately, and has no architectural merit whatsoever, I do believe. Uh, it is, well, it will need virtual reconstruction to make it worth living in, I think. And the roof is a wreck, or part of it is. Uh, and generally, it is, shall we say, not suitable for purpose, I don't th I think. But of course, the uh, planning officer and Mr. Hicks have done their best to convert um, a pig's ear into some form of silk purse. But it is, I think, going to be a very hard job to make it anything more than pig's ear. <coughs> Uh, the building number three, the wreck, uh, <laughs> will be a great asset to be removed, I think, or a very major part of it. Uh, and that will be a benefit, I think, to anybody who walks in that area. Uh, this is, a, shall we say, an interesting proposition. It, it, it is outside the Kingsland Development Plan the neighborhood development boundary line. It is definitely contrary to the Kingsland neighborhood development plan. It has effects upon effects upon the, uh, the conservation area, which is actually rather special. It has this beautiful, quiet, lowland, flat outlook, which allows you to see the Kingsland house, grade two star, Kingston Church, Grade 1, recently upgraded as well, uh, well up, shall we say, heavily restored uh, with great benefit by treasures. Done a wonderful job there. And there are a multitude of footpaths that go by and enjoy the quiet, rural delight of this particular part of the conservation area. It is very special. And to, I think we have to acknowledge that this, this proposed construction will have some material effect upon the conservation area. And I'd like you to bear that in mind very much, please. It is an important part of Kingsland, and we do not want Kingsland to develop into a, a, a straggle of isolated developments, which might then lead on to more development and so on, and completely destroy that part of the conservation area. Um, so, I think it does not preserve or enhance the conservation area by doing this, except perhaps by taking away that wreckage of a building, Barn 3. Um, and it does lead to domestication of the rural scene, which again, I think is unfortunate. This is a very tranquil, very special, I think well, not quite unique, but certainly unusually perfect rural <coughs> setting around about the village. <coughs> The village itself is a very much a, a linear, linear one, and any development has always been on the other side of the road um, from these, from the, this conservation, part of the conservation area. We also do not have a necessity to build houses in Kingsland. Um, we've got 6.9 years housing supply. We have more than exceeded the targets that we were set for new building in Kingsland, and. I do not think there's a pressing need for further development in this part of the world. Um, the, the drainage mound, it's fed from two, two plants, um, which will, uh, we hope, turn the sewage into water, more or less, and then drain it through these, this, this large mound, which again is perhaps out of kilter with the rest of the conservation area. Um, these, this mound is supplied by water from these, uh, these, uh, these machines to, and it needs power to pump the water up the top of the mound and out. <coughs> now, if there's a, a power outage, and we have had power cuts recently, and one of two and a half days, I ask you, what will happen to the sewage? There no doubt is some reserve storage, but then uh, do you have to send in large tankers to empty the system, or what happens? 
It is a concern. Also, it says there's, there's no danger of flooding there. I have, in fact, seen floodwaters right up to the entrance to the, to the barns, right up there, right across the concrete. And that has not been noted. But if you live in Kingsland, you are all too aware of the frequency and possibility of flooding. It's a very flat area, and it is, and the water table is very high. And I'd like to know more about the rain gardens, too. Are they like the hanging gardens of Babylon? Or what is their glory and specification? And will they manage to take away the huge amounts of water that sometimes fall upon the top of the world? Will they do their job? I think we need a clarification on that, Mr. Lewis. Um, you may have rain gardens in your own backyard, I don't know, but I've never seen one yet. I'd like to know how they work and how efficient they're likely to be. Um, so there are, we have quite a lot of, uh, we say, negative aspects of this application. I think obviously a lot of work's gone into it. I appreciate all the good points, but I think you have to consider the harm, the domestication of the rural scene. You've got to consider also whether the buildings are really worth, well, certainly the one building will, retire, will, will require almost entire uh, renewal to make anything like a, a decent building to live in. The little barn, half of it is a decent little barn, the other half is, is a modern tack on and not of great, any great value at all. It is, would not be classified as any form of worthwhile heritage building. The left hand side, I can understand that, but the right hand side isn't. So uh, you must consider that as well, I think. And of course, you've got. Uh, the aspect of how sustainable that particular location is uh, it is set well away from Kingsland itself, perhaps 300 yards from the, from the road itself. <coughs> uh, and you must consider if that is a, a right way of um, developing in this particular day and age. So I will be interested to hear your comments and your views. And um, I look forward to that. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Bowley. Now I'll open the item for debate. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> uh, a question, please, to Mr. Lewis. Um, in the early part of his report, he made reference to the conservation area um, and the acoustics prevented me from understanding that clearly, I'd be grateful if he would comment on his view about the effect of this building on the conservation area again for me. Thank you. Yeah, so it was the, the, the view of the conservation officer in terms of uh, how this development would affect the conservation area, is that what you were seeking? Yes. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, so the comments we've had from the uh, conservation officer here, um, there's sort of two prongs to their comments in terms of listed buildings, they don't identify any harm there. Um, comments in terms of the impact on the conservation area, um, what they have identified in their comments is uh, minimal impact, essentially. So uh, not no harm, um, but a very low level of, of effect, which is uh, acknowledged in the report, obviously, in terms of the balance. So that then needs to be struck against the benefits of the scheme. Thank you. And, and uh, you, you also made comment, I believe, that the um, normal approach taken by a planning officer in these cases is to uh, try to preserve conservation areas uh, unless it can, uh, unless what you just described can be demonstrated. Is that so? Um, yeah. So the, the the duties upon. The councillors, uh, the planning authorities, to put, to pay regard to ensuring that the area is preserved or enhanced. Um, so, in this case, I think we'd argue that the area is, um, you know, at, at, at a minimum preserved. Um, yes. And, and so, sort of reaching that conclusion relies on that that balance of impacts versus benefits. Um, when that benefit, when that balance is is done, um, it's officers' view that we're in a net beneficial. Um, you know, overall impact. That makes sense. Thank 
I, I appreciate the difficulty that officers must have <clears throat> in cases like this, but um, the my, my previous understanding of it and your explanation, which I thank you, um, merely highlights to me that it is a, a matter that is highly subjective. Um, who decides and upon what balance, where harm is done and where it isn't. And so, but um, but that, that's a subject for a, a more academic debate elsewhere. Thank you for your answer, Mr. Lewis. Thank you, Chairman. I've got no Councillor Watson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'd like to pick up actually on uh, Councillor Johnson's point as well about the conservation area, uh, because from reading the conservation officer's report, his continual request is for earthy colours, protection of the tree roots, and that there will be a domestic impact on the visual amenity. Um, my other point is that um, the houses, according to the Kingsland NDP, is not required, it's not needed. Um, and it's always really sad for me as a councillor when the local NDP is not actually given true weight because it's what local people want. That's why they do an NDP. And I think that at this, um, and this is a really good example of where Heritage Council core strategy is not in line with the local NDP. My other question is around the lesser horseshoe bat. Um, I, I read the uh, conservation report um, provided by the applicant, and um, I see that she has taken a two kilometre um, um, di um, region. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, from the circuit, from uh, the site itself, but lesser horseshoe bats actually require a bat flight of five to ten kilometres. And they're very sensitive to light pollution and noise pollution. And there has been bats in a lesser horseshoe bat found in 730 metres northwest of the site, which I'm assuming is actually in the church. Um, so again, this is for me a surprise why the ecologist didn't pick up on uh, the, the, the bat flights. But um, for me, I won't be supporting this application because I do agree that from a conservation area perspective, it will have an environmental impact. It will have an impact on the light pollution and the noise pollution, and thus, therefore, having a detrimental impact on the uh, lesser horseshoe bat habitat, and also it's illegal um, um, for, um, it's against the Wildlife and Countryside Act um, and the Rights of Way Act 2000 and Conservation of Habitats and Species Regulation 2017 to actually impair their ability to hibernate or migrate or feed their young. So, um, so yeah, it's not support, the buildings aren't supporting the rural economy, they're not affordable housing, and <coughs> yeah, I'm just wondering, my last question, my question rather than my comment, is that has any sky quality surveys been carried out on the site to demonstrate the negative, the impact that the housing could have on dark skies? Uh, we don't have a direct assessment for that, no. Um, but I think that would be an element that, um, just coming back to the comments in terms of bats and protected species, I think I'll just caveat from the start to say I'm not an ecologist, so I can only really refer you to um, the comments from, from the council specialist in that area, which obviously lead on from the specialists have been employed by the, the applicant. Uh, one would assume that there's been an assessment of light pollution being a major impact on the, the movements of, of bats as part of those assessments. Um, and, and, and neither, if there's a consultee, there are no objections you know, offered to, to the strategy that have been put forward and, and no conflict identified with the relevant duties a council has to protect uh, protected species. So um, again, I, I have no reason to doubt my colleagues Conclusions. Um, so, so that's what. Okay. okay. Thank you, Councillor Watson, for your batty contribution. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, Councillor Watson um, and members, can I just identify to you the NDP, the core strategy, um, an NDP, the rate, the, the relationship between the two. 
the core strategy, which was used first, so the NDP has to comply with the core strategy, not the NDP, not the core strategy complying with the NDP. It's that, that's the way it has to work, and it does. The core, if the NDP did not comply with the core strategy, the NDP would not have gone through for adoption. That's quite clear. So it's, it, it's, the, it's the other way around to where you were saying. The NDP complies with the core strategy. The difference in opinion which you have is that you have the professional officers and the, the information supported with the application confirming that the application is not a rebuild. If you consider it as a rebuild, it's quite clear it's contrary to the core strategy, it's contrary to the NDP. As a conversion, it's compliant with the core strategy and it's compliant with the NDP. And that's what your, that's what your professional officers are advising you. As regards to ecology, you, again, your professional officers are advising you that the, uh, those aspects have been considered and the ecologist raises no objection. They are the professionals advising us and advising you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Stone. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. When I came on the site, was it yesterday, I could see there were some advantages in reusing these redundant buildings and uh, improving them in all sorts of ways. Um, but I think these advantages are far outweighed by significant disadvantages in this application. There is the impact on the conservation area, firstly, and secondly, the setting of the listed building, the very fine St. Michael's Church, Grade 1 listed building. As we stood on the site, looked across the, the fields, looked towards the church, um, I did feel it was going to be quite detrimental uh, to have um, properties here within, within the site of St. Michael's Church. The NDP, which Mr. Bishop has just been talking about, has delivered on the core strategy target for housing in Kingsland. Um, so no housing need has really been demonstrated here. Um, I think we need to pay attention, as we should do to the core strategy, but also to the views of the Kingsland Parish Council, who have set out a number of reasons why they are uh, proposed to this application. Both the Parish Council and the Neighbourhood Development Plan so much work went into these NDPs. I know from um, our own, uh, in my ward, how many volunteers were involved. And I think if we start taking decisions contrary to the NDP, people will rightly say, well, why do we do all this work in the first place? This application is outside an identified settlement. Um, I wonder, as Councillor Watson has just said, how sustainable this location actually is. And the local members mentioned flooding as an issue. It's an issue in all the villages, many of the villages in North Herefordshire, and the very flat um, area of Kingsland, I'm sure, is affected too. So that's another reason I've got concerns about it. So I will have great difficulty supporting this application. Um, in fact, um, I have a lot of reservations about it, and I agree with much of what the local members just said. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Bill. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, and I much appreciate uh, the Lord Councillor's invitation to us all yesterday. I thought it was incredibly useful, uh, as ever, the opportunity to go have a site visit. Um, inevitably, I, as, uh, as, as I'm interested in the uh, historic environment and uh, archaeology, I spent much of my time looking at the, the Timber Frame building. And it's, as uh, Councillor Bowen uh, has observed, uh, not all of one period, it's not all quite all of, as it seems. Uh, it um, actually started out, I think, uh, in the early 19th century as an outfield steading uh, uh, on a, a, th a three-sided <coughs> thing, it's only two sides today, of which we only, only one range, or only part of one range survives of that early 19th century uh, uh, structure, the, um, the, the, the southern end of it, the closest to the Pinsley book. Uh, the rest of it, as Councillor Bowen observed, is, is, a, is a reconstruction, quite recent really, later 20th century, and it's extraordinarily ephemeral. It's sticks and planks, uh, and it's um, very difficult to see, honestly, how it could 
genuinely be, be converted. Um, just to remind ourselves that under policy RA5, buildings to be converted for reuse of rural buildings have to be a permanent and substantial construction capable of conversion without major reconstruction. Well, here is a building which, and I, I accept that uh, the building control officer has um, clearly had a conversation with the applicant's agent and, uh, and look, looked at the, um, the submission and, and taken a view. But here is a building which, and I, I, mean, I also accept that I'm, I'm not a builder. Um, and that uh, we have a very fine builder in this room uh, in Council Road. Uh, I, I, maybe he will speak for himself in a minute. I won't try to do that. But we, we have a, a building that will have to be com almost completely stripped out and virtually entirely rebuilt to make a useful house of it. The roof, the walls, the floors, everything. So it doesn't, it fails that crucial test of one of, of substance. The works go beyond conversion. It fails that test. Therefore, in my opinion, it fails uh, 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 the, the, the policy. And I will not be supporting it for that point of view. Thank you. Chair? All right. Councillor Wilding next, followed by Councillor Norman and then Councillor Rowe. Thank you, Chair. I'd actually like to recommend refusal of this um, item. This is a development in open countryside and it does need a substantial rebuild. Um, I've actually rebuilt an old barn, so I know what's involved. And having looked in there, I agree with Councillor Mill that it will need a complete substantial rebuild. Uh, policy RA5, um, it, it fails. I believe that has been quoted as a reason to support the development but I believe RA5 actually can be used to support refusal. Uh, point two on RA5 talks about protected priority species and associated habitats. Point three, uh, that it does not cause undue environmental impacts. And I know uh, what the officer said, that it was a low uh, low impact, but I believe there is no lower end to environmental impact. Each time we allow another development, we carry on the slow creep of domestication of rural locations. Human activity gradually pushes nature out, and this is what will happen here. We will just allow the start of another slow creep where nature is pushed out of this beautiful area. Uh, we cannot alter what was built before, but we can protect what is uh, due to become. So I suggest that we need to rewild these areas, not attack them from all areas. Uh, part four of uh, policy RA5, as Councillor Milne said, is talking about building conversion um, and it says, without major reconstruction, in my opinion, to change these buildings into livable accommodation will require massive major reconstruction. Um, RA5, which might be used a little bit, uh, it doesn't fit with any of those. Uh, there are seven uh, tests. Uh, test four and five uh, four only relates to uh, RA5, and five is only for affordable housing, and it's not going to be affordable housing. So, uh, and, and uh, as far as structural engineers, uh, professional people, of course they say it can be done. Uh, engineers will always agree with those who commission their work, that uh, if we give you enough money, you can make it a good house, can't you? Yes, I can. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Wilding. Can I just um, uh, ask, is there a seconder? Right. Councillor Norman next. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you to the Officer for a, a detailed report. Um, a lot has been said already that I absolutely agree with, in particular the point just made about the slow creep 
of something like this. I think that's a really important element in what we're discussing. When an application comes to committee, it is always one where there is a balance, where there is a controversial uh, you know, element to it, and there are different ways of looking at these things. Um, and clearly there are some arguments in favour of this, um, and some against it. I've come down very much on the side of against it, and that is in particular because um, I, I don't see the benefit. The public benefit is not there as far as I'm concerned. There's clearly benefit to the applicant, um, but not anywhere else. The housing is not needed, as we've heard. Um, this is outside the boundary of the, develop, of the, uh, of the parish, of the village. Um, it's within the, the, um, the conservation area with the difficulties that that poses. Um, so I think uh, there are, we need to look at that balance and for me they are very much on the side of not going along with this. Um, we are talking about a conservation area, we've referred to various uh, important buildings, listed buildings, protected buildings, but for me the context is every bit as important, not just the specific buildings but the context, and here the context in itself needs to be protected in, in my view. Um, I walk a great deal, I know this area, and for me, I'm actually not offended by the sight of some slightly scruffy, a bit run-down uh, farm buildings. They don't offend me nearly as much as pristine, brand new, uh, you know, immaculately um, landscaped um, developments in the wrong place. And for me, that's very much what this would actually be. Um, I share the concerns already referred to about light pollution. I think that's one to worry about. Um, I am concerned about setting a precedent. We've heard that most of the development is linear or on the other side of the main route through the village, not out this particular way. Um, so I think to set a precedent, as this would be to some extent, is not, not helpful. Um, I am very concerned, as I think we all are in this area, about possible pollution of the um, of the water system and the Pinsley Brook is only a hundred metres away. I, un I understand and accept the commitments that are made to providing the very best um, system for dealing with the, um, with the waste, um, but uh, I am not reassured, I'm afraid, sufficiently. I still feel we are right to be very concerned about that and the point about flooding I don't think has been sufficiently addressed in relation to that either. So there are a lot of reasons, I think, for going with the public instinct on this, the local public instinct on this, oh, or feeling okay. about That's this. I'm afraid and I don't be three supporting it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Can, can I ask a question of the planning officers? Um, it has established uh, agricultural use for, build, for agricultural buildings. The building, the existing building is not listed. Um, uh, would it be possible for it to be demolished and a new agricultural building replacing the existing building placed on that? Yeah. Um, if an app, that, that a development of that kind would, would need permission, um, and it would have to be considered based on what's proposed and its relative merits, how it would affect conservation areas. So there's no firm answer I can give that. Right. Right. Councillor Rowan. Thank you, Chair. Kingsland, what a lovely village, eh? It's uh, one of the jewels in the crown of Herefordshire, in my opinion. Uh, I love villages that have got pubs and churches and life going on and shops. Absolutely smashing. But we've just heard from two very passionate public speakers in favour of, of a uh, refusal chair. I must say I have an awful lot of sympathy with them, especially on the conversion issue. I made loads of notes about this, but I'm not going to repeat what colleagues have said. But uh, on the conversion issue, as, as to whether these buildings can be converted. We do, however, and it's in the, it's in the uh, documents, we've got a, a, a plethora of professionally prepared documents to support this application. And additionally, our own officer has stated the soundness of the buildings for conversion. Building 1, the oak frame barn, has some merit, all, albeit quite small. But in all honesty, I am struggling with barn 2. I, I, I see no, very, very little, in fact, almost nil uh, conversion there. But I, I, I'm not a professional, I don't have letters after my name. 
Is this project really going to enhance the area? I, I'm struggling with that as well. I see it being a, a at the moment, uh, I think Councillor Norman said we don't want anything neat and tidy. It's at the moment at a glance, it's a it's a series of old barns. Do we want to see picket fences and but remember, there's also going to be cars parked there and maybe even a caravan parked there. For, and so all of a sudden it urbanises right bang in the middle of the field. It's interesting hearing from colleagues, and I agree with almost everything that has been said, but at the moment, even with those professional documents, I am struggling. I'm in two minds, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Tillis. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, at this late date, I think the only point for intervening is, is to raise something new, because... Um, by and large, I agree with almost everything I've heard from colleagues. But I just wanted to pick up um, perhaps a point um, that Councillor Watson and just now Councillor Roan mentioned uh, in terms of the light and noise pollution and the unsustainability of this. We're talking about seven bedrooms in total. Therefore, let us consider how many vehicles that might generate. Um, and assuming that the plan is to scale, um, well, garage, the garage unit clearly has parking room for four. Um, I'd argue that the, um, the parking space in front of the three bed has similarly parking space for another four vehicles. And yet the plan also includes a very large turning area to the north of the site. Um, it does beggar the question of how many vehicles are expected to be coming up and down to this site. Um, possibly even, as Councillor Rohn alluded to, uh, the old caravan at the weekend, um, it just seems to be an awful lot of at least estimated or expected vehicles coming up and down this road, um, completely altering the nature of this site. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? There are none. Perhaps I can call upon the officers to sum up before I call the local member. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, a couple of points of clarification again. Uh, flood risk that's been raised. Uh, I'll turn to 6.45 of the report, where it's clearly identified that it's in flood zone one. There is no flood flood um, identified. It's it's a low low flood risk note, and uh, and even the drainage engineer hasn't raised it, who deals with the with that with that aspect as well as part of his day to day job. Um, five year housing land supply. There is no upper limit. There is no maximum limit on, a, on, a, on um, requirements for, for villages to take, etc. So that's the first point. The second point, yes, we have a five-year housing land supply now. If you stop to grant permission for dwellings moving forward, you will soon run out of a five-year housing land supply and all your neighbourhood plans will become out of date again. It's a position we've been in, we were in for quite some time, and it was, and it was um, difficult for officers, as members quite rightly identify, local people have put a lot of hard work into neighbourhood plans, where they had to put them to one side and say, no, those policies are out of date. Just be aware of your decision making in that respect. If you don't grant permission for new dwellings moving forward, you will fall off the cliff and you will not have a fibre house and land supply. I know I'm pushing against the tide on this one, because I know the reaction in the room, um, but I would caution you, because obviously it's quite clear that your professional officers have reviewed the report, that professional consultees have clearly identified that the proposal is acceptable, the Structure Engineers report has been reviewed by the Council's Building Control Officer, quite clearly identified that buildings can be converted. So they are conversions, they're not rebuild. Sorry, they're, they're, they're not new build. They, they are conversions which will be converted from the, from, the, from the buildings there. If members go down the lines of, of refusal, undoubtedly we will, we, we will receive an appeal against this and I would caution against that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bowie. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, and, and thank you, Mr Bishop, for his uh, kind comments. Uh, 
New dwellings, I'm sure, we all welcome in the right place. These dwellings proposed are not in the right place. Simple as that. Uh, and to say they will require no major reconstruction, I think, is pushing your luck. They will require very major reconstruction, particularly the hideous uh, concrete and steel frame building, which um, has no, no <laughs> benefits to anybody, I think, really, uh, except possibly to a bat. That's not even a bat. Um, I think the damage to the conservation area, as uh, Councillor Whiteling said, it's damage, it's damage, it's damage. It is unquantifiable in many ways because once you've started the damage, it can then creep on in other ways. And once you turn this little complex into an urban development, which it will be, you've actually started the rot, I'm afraid. And that is very damaging to conservation areas and to the, the whole matter of how we look after our conservation areas and how we preserve and protect and guard and guide them. So I do not think there's great public benefit in this. Uh, and I, I do appreciate the work that's gone into it, both from the officer's point of view and from Mr. Hicks and his associates, but I'm afraid, as far as the village goes, they are barking up the wrong set of bricks. So I would very much appreciate that this this possible damage to the neighborhood development plan, uh, to the conservation area, and the, the evils, perhaps, of urbanization in the wrong place should be resisted. So let us, uh, well, I hope you will actually vote against this um, application and leave the little place in its own quiet little way to add, as it does now, perhaps to the charms of the conservation area, without bringing in large amounts of urban urbanization. Thank you. Right, we have a proposal uh, with a seconder. Do we have the reasons? Uh, thanks, Chair. Well, I've already said RA5, particularly point four, when it talks about buildings capable of conversion without major reconstruction. Um, and I think it's backed up by RA3, and I'd welcome any other suggestions that members might have to add to that. Are there any other suggestions? Councillor Mill? SS1, SS6, SS7, LD1, possibly. Um, NPPF uh, paragraph 79, which is which is the basis of RA5, uh, and then the, and the neighbourhood uh, development plan, KNDP is one, two, and four. Oh, and six possibly. <coughs> They've all been mentioned this morning. If you're going down those lines, uh, I would suggest you would include. Um, KNDB 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 14. In terms of the housing uh, core strategy, um, SS1, SS6, RA2, RA3, RA5, LD1, LD4. I would suggest those would be uh, items that you would, you would consider as part of a refusal reason. Uh, however, I would caution that the the likelihood of, of the success of defending an appeal would be very limited, but the, that, if that's your wish, so be it. Right, is that agreed with those additional conditions? Can I ask for those in favour? Please show. In favour of the motion has. This is in favour of refusal. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Against. Against. Yeah. Against. Sorry. Against. No. Abstentions. Okay, 
Well, that motion is carried. I now call for a 10 minute um, adjournment. Thank you, break. Can I welcome you back to the meet? Can I welcome you back to the meeting? I request that the public speakers present, physically for the agenda item six, joining the meeting. Mrs. Pearson, the applicant, please take a seat at the public tables. speak following the presentation of the application. The application before us is Priory Farm, Stoke Prior, Lemster, Hereford, proposed alteration and development of existing equine facilities to form a new indoor arena, stabling and an essential working dwelling. I'll ask the officer now to make the presentation. Thank you, Chairman. Hopefully you can all hear me. Um, very good morning to members. Thank you to those who attended the committee site visit yesterday. Um, hopefully that proved to be a useful exercise um, just in respect of contextualising the site and its surroundings. Um, first of all, I would draw members' attention to the committee update sheet. Um, the applicant's agent has submitted a rebuttal to the published committee report. You will note that there are some officer responses to these points, but otherwise um, the presentation will seek to touch upon these matters where it is considered to be necessary. Just in specific response to two questions raised by a member of the committee yesterday, it's confirmed that the public right of way, which runs to the northwest of the site, it's public right of way SP1, um, has not been legally altered or modified and therefore remains as shown on the definitive map. That was confirmed by the council's um, public right of way officer at BBLB yesterday. Secondly, the agricultural land classification of the site, according to Herefordshire's Count Heritage Council's map, is Grade 2. So the application is made in full and seeks planning permission for alterations and development of an existing equine facility, which is known as Priory Farm Equine Centre. It would include a new indoor riding arena, further stabling, together with an equine worker's dwelling. The existing centre offers delivery and a range of tuition um, to suit clients' requirements. So on the slide now, members will see the location of the site as to mark by the Red Star. It's located in a, at elevation to the immediate north of the main part of the village of Stoke Prior. Um, access to the site is via an existing track through Priory Farm, taken from the minor road which leads northeast from the village towards the primary school. So go to the next slide, please. So this just shows the extent of the site. Um, mark with the red line to be able to make out the access there from Priory Farm um, from the from the Passway Road um, through through the site um, by the track up to where we were met yesterday. And the next slide, please. So here we have the extent of the site edged in red, and then the remainder of the applicant's <coughs> holding edged in blue. Next slide, please. This one just shows the site with reference to um, with reference, reference made to three key location points within and relevant to the site. The so location at the southern extremity is Priory Farm and Farmhouse, where the applicant resides and where the access is taken. Um, and there are saving facilities um, purpose for DOI delivery in and around this location. Location B in the north is the main part of the site where the development is proposed and where again we met on site yesterday. So the stables, riding arena and equine workers dwelling are proposed in this location. And then location C in the middle is just another means of access to the site and those of you who attended the, visit, the, the meeting yesterday will be familiar with this. So go to the next slide please. 
So this shows the yard location B, the main part of the site as existing. It clearly shows the existing development on the site, including the yard area and a portal frame shed used for stabling. The existing caravan for storage and various lockups, outbuildings associated with the running of the yard too. Um, and we'll have some voting this to follow um, in the presentation. Next slide, please. And here we have the proposed site plan, which demonstrates the proposed alterations and development of the site. Um, so quite a significant increase in stabling, which would occupy the existing yard area to the west of the site. The work is dwelling to the south of the site with a seminar room attached. Um, the existing portal shed would remain for stabling, but with an attached open side of lean-to um, to create a covered yard area. And then a new indoor arena, um, just there, sited to the north of the yard. So next slide, please. Um, so we'll just run through some of the proposed plans and elevations. Here we can see the plans for the proposed single-storey equine workers' dwelling. Essentially a studio, with one bedroom, kitchen, living space. And then again, you can see attached to that is a seminar room again with um, kitchen and bathroom facilities as well. Next slide, please. So the proposed elevations show the existing board frame building on the site, as can be seen clearly on the front northern elevation at the bottom left of the slide. The proposed dwelling and seminar room would be small, <coughs> low profile single storey building, sitting under a dual pitch roof. The east and western side elevations of the right hand on the right hand show the addition of the lean to to the front of the portal ship, um, portal frame building. Next one please. And then the proposed stable building, so fairly typical, functional, and as you, as you would expect in their form and appearance. Uh, next slide. And then the proposed indoor riding arena. So fully enclosed, doors to both sides. Um, the building would have a ridge height of just over six metres, um, and the length of this building would be 24 metres, um, and it's width 12. Um, so we go to the next slide and we move on to some photographs. So this looks north to the side from the access of, uh, from the access track. We're able to make out the existing port frame building there. To the left and west of which is where the proposed dwelling and seminar room would be positioned. And beyond again, um, the new um, stable block. Uh, next one please. So here we're just looking away from the site um, in a southerly direction. So this just shows us an elevation of the site. It's just about to make out some of the dwellings in Stoke Prior. Um, and then Prior, Priory Farm itself is um, situates itself in the bottom of the valley, roughly sort of in the centre of that photograph. Um, next slide, please. So this looks west across the site, a small existing outdoor arena which will be retained. And then the proposed portal frame lean-to would occupy that existing hard standing area to the front where that existing shed is, and that would provide a um, sheltered yet yeah, sheltered yard <coughs> area. And then beyond you would be able, you can make out the concrete panel walls, and that's where the proposed tables would be sited. Uh, I think the next photo is just the same one, so yeah, so we could just go to the next one again, please. Um, so yeah, this, this essentially shows the same view, but um, slightly zoomed out and stood slightly to the north, so you can kind of see the yard area um, showing the entirety of the site. Um, and you can make out that concrete panel walling where the stage will be positioned. Uh, next one, please. Uh, I think the final photo, this, is, this looks north, it shows the area of the paddock where the new indoor arena would be located. Um, the site is generally bound by hedgerow trees, which does offer some screening from the long, from long distance views, despite, despite its elevation. And you can, you can make out that the site is relatively flat, but does, it does slope. Um, from south to north, somewhat. So, in terms of um, the assessment of the application, whilst located close to Stoke Prior, the site is found within open countryside, whereby new residential development is strictly controlled. Residential development in such locations can only be supported where it meets one of the criteria as set out in Core Strategy Policy RA3. One such exception is where the development would, meet, would be where it meets an agricultural or forestry need or other farm diversification enterprise 
in enabling a rural worker to live permanently at or near their place of work and complies with policy RA4 of the core strategy. Policy RA4 of the core strategy sets out that such dwelling should be predicated on there being a dem demonstrated essential functional need and that it is part of a financially sustainable business as well as that such need cannot be met in any existing accommodation amongst other factors. Um, so firstly, just to note, offices do not dispute the financial sustainability of the business, nor its established nature. Um, the business has been running for some time, um, so yeah, offices don't, don't dispute that um, point. However, in the first instance, offices would make reference to the, plan, to the planning history of the site. In 2018, the planning commission was sought for, a temporary, for temporary accommodation for the room manager and stable and raise horses. The application was refused by the local planning authority, an appeal, the planning inspector issued a split decision, refusing the temporary accommodation element, citing that an essential need for a dwelling to accommodate a rural worker to live at or near the place of work was not, had not been adequately demonstrated, and that there was conflict, conflict with policies RA3 and RA4 of the core strategy, and also policy HFSB2 of the Humber Board and Stoke Prior Labour Development Plan. However, the provision of the eight stables was allowed, and as you will note, these have not been built, these, that permission has not been implemented. So it's therefore to consider whether there are any changes since this decision was made which may have a bearing on the case for there being now an essential functional need. So in this case, the applicant is retired from the day-to-day -day running of the enterprise, but resides at Prop Priory Farmhouse, referred to as location A on the plan that we had earlier. Um, the responsibility therefore falls to the groom manager, who operates the site as one over location A and B. Location B obviously being the site proposed for expansion and the workers dwelling. Location A, the area in, around, in and around Priory Farmhouse, is focused mainly um, for DOI livery. The business now runs to a total of 30 acres of land, up from 17 acres in 2018, and this gives capacity for around 24 horses. The increase in land equates to a, equates to a capacity increase of around eight horses, therefore equating to the number of stables that were allowed to appeal in 2018. And at that time, the inspector concluded that there, there was no essential need for a work, rural workers dwelling at the site. So that was taking into account an enterprise which has today's capacity um, with respect to the number of horses. Therefore, notwithstanding the commitment to expand the enterprise further, as expressed through this submission, the scale of the business is fundamentally limited by the size of the holding and the number of horses it can support. The service offered offer to clients' horses at location B is of the same nature as that which took place in 2018. With respect to responding to emergencies, it has not been adequately demonstrated that monitoring systems cannot assist out of hours, or indeed, the checks last thing at night and first thing in the morning would not suffice, especially given that the room manager will be on site during the day. Um, and this was corroborated by the inspector's decision previously. Furthermore, policy RA4 of the core strategy states that it, it should be demonstrated that any such needs cannot be met, cannot be met in existing accommodation. It is acknowledged that the applicant has retired from the day-to-day -day running of the business and therefore less weight can be given for the reliance on there being a presence of private farmhouse. However, private farmhouse has been subdivided and there was previously and was previously subject to a short-term occupancy agreement. Um, this was the case at the time um, that the previous application was considered. However, since the appeal decision and the submission of this application, it is understood that the applicant's son has moved into the unit. Therefore, whilst offices note the, the applicant's rebuttal of paragraph 1.3, there is no suggestion that the house be sub subdivided to accommodate the needs of the rural, rural worker. Rather, the unit already exists and benefits from planning permission and became vacant during the time in which there was a supposed need for permanent accommodation for the room manager. No evidence of whether any consideration was given to housing the room manager in this, in this unit of accommodation has been provided as part of this submission. Therefore, officers consider that an essential need for a dwelling to accommodate a rural worker to live at or near their place of work in this open countryside location has not been adequately demonstrated. The provision of the dwelling is therefore considered to conflict with core strategy policies RA3 and RA4, together with policy HFSP2 of the Humber Ford and Stoke Prior Neighbour Development Plan, together with principles of the MPPF, namely paragraph 80, which seeks to avoid isolated homes in the open countryside. Moving on, the proposed buildings would increase the built form of the site notably. The site is found in an attractive landscape of fields and paddocks banked by trees and hedgerows, but it is well screened. The additions, however, would overall be function functionally and appropriately designed and would not be considered such that would be out of place in this rural setting. 
The additions would be seen from the public right of way, which runs to the northwest of the site, but they would not be considered untypical in their form and, and appearance as to present as unduly detrimental in visual terms um, in, in this rural landscape setting. Similarly, the proposed development has been assessed when having regard to the regards to the historic environment. Officers do not consider that the proposal would result in any harm to heritage, asset, heritage assets or their setting. In respect of um, access and highway safety, the proposal may lead to an increased, increased vehicle movement. The additional information supplied by the applicant, which clarifies the second point of access of the C112, referred to as location C on the map, demonstrates adequately that there would not be any unacceptable impact on the local highway network for increased traffic movements or large vehicles accessing the site. Um, if we have the next slide, it just shows location C again, just so that members uh, can look at that. Yeah, so location C is that the one in the middle where members would have accessed the site yesterday. So that essentially allows for better access for larger vehicles such as horse boxes, um, rather than having to go through the primary one itself. In respect of ecology, the planning ecology team do not identify any issues with regards to impact on protected species, although with any approval, of course, the applicant would be reminded of their legal duty of care in this regard. However, the application site does lie within the catchment of the River Lug, a tributary of the River Wye, and forms part of the designated special area of conservation. As members will be aware, the site is currently failing its conservation objectives and therefore development within the River Lug can only be permitted in limited exceptions. The proposal would increase foul water flows through the introduction of a dwelling. No professional drainage report has been submitted to the Council, which demonstrates that the current drainage arrangements accord with the current criteria that are laid out in the Council's latest position statement. Furthermore, the proposal would facilitate an intensification of the equine enterprise, and no legal certainty um, or any details have been provided at this stage, which demonstrate how that, how that manure is dealt with. Therefore, at this point in time, it's not possible to conclude that the proposal would not result in any likely significant effects on the designated site. So to conclude, the proposals for the expansion of existing land-based enterprise in the open countryside. Whilst the expansion of rural and land-based enterprise in general terms can be supported, the proposed equine workers' dwelling is without adequate justification for the reasons as set out in the officer's report and explained in this presentation. The application would therefore promote unsustainable patterns of development within the open countryside Contrary to core strategy policies RA3 and RA4, policy HFSP2 of the Humber Ford Stoke Prior Neighbour Development Plan, together with the overarching aims and objectives of the National Planning Policy Framework, namely paragraph 80. Additionally, the application has not demonstrated that the proposal would not have an adverse effect on the designated special area of conservation. The proposal is therefore contrary to policies LD2 and SD4 of the Heritage Local Plan Core Strategy. Policy HFS P14 of the Humber Ford Stoke Prior Labour Development Plan, along with the MPPF. As such, in the round, the scheme is representative of an unsustainable form of development and is accordingly recommended for refusal as set out in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Now I invite Mrs. Pearson to the applicant to speak. <clears throat> Thank you. Andrew and I. Uh, our owners of the Priory Equestrian Centre and our yard manager is Miss Carolyn Buckton. Our aim is to improve the enterprise, enabling Carolyn to support the essential needs of the business, to provide a range of equest equestrian opportunities and training for our business clients as well as the stud, and provide employment in the rural community. I have MS, multiple sclerosis, so I'm retiring due to ill health. Carolyn Buckton will take the business forward on a day-to-day -day basis. There isn't any affordable housing in the village and Carol Carolyn's current temporary lodging adjacent to the site has ended. We desperately need to secure on-site accommodation. There is nothing available on site and two years ago our son returned from university uh, to join our garden centre. He lives independently in the annex and we are not able to subdivide our existing home. I don't want to lose our rural enterprise and that we have developed up to now. It is very successful and the parish council have the um, and village supporters. In addition to our current stud and bridges, a renowned equine specialist is keen to breed show jumping young stock using stallions um, such as Big Star that next to Gelton won gold at the Olympics with. So more stables are necessary and are of a different size for foaling. Mares in late pregnancy need checking every 15 minutes. 
uh, we more frequently as falling increases and it is imperative for a person to be on site. Dan has lost a mare and foal that was not monitored adequately. And this has a massive impact on a person emotionally and financially. CCTV cannot be used as a monitoring method. There's no phone line, there's no Wi-Fi, and it's not cost effective and not possible. It is not capable of taking temperature, recording heart rates, or checking a foal is suckling properly. This is all covered by the Animal Welfare Act 2006. You would never leave your dog in kennels overnight without somebody being present. Carolyn is wholly responsible for the horses and the foals. She has all the experience plus equine first aid to meet their safety and vital health needs. The value, on horses, the value of horses on site will be high. One horse alone is worth £20,000, so their security is paramount. An agricultural dwelling needs to be within earshot. Shot. Due to the public footpaths crossing the property, there is an issue of safety for horses and the general public if the gates are left open. Horses are flight animals and they protect, behave unpredictably. We run a garden centre in Hereford, 21 minutes drive away, another reason we need someone on site. Herefordshire is remote to any equine hospitals, three counties is whom we belong, and that's one hour by road. If you're travelling with a horse and trailer, it's longer. We're happy to enter a 106 agreement to ensure the dwelling to the equine business, that is not a problem and we are looking to remove the random clutter from the site, enhance the setting um, with sympathetic buildings sorry. made of wood, and improve the environment with trees. Okay, sorry about that. But That's all right, thank you very much. Thank you. Can I, just before we start, uh, uh, can I hand over to the ward, local ward member? I'm just going to make a comment then, but I will, I'll, after he's spoken. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Jones, for your presentation. So, um, I don't like to go against office direction, especially one as diligent as professional as Holly is, but I do think that this is an exceptional uh, circumstance. There is a, I don't think there's necessarily a problem with the improvement to the buildings, the increase in stabling, um, as Ollie alluded to, the previous inspector, uh, this previous inspection uh, granted permission for that part of, of the enterprise. The issue here really is that we've got a site which is not open countryside in the sense that you classically think. We're not asking for something totally isolated. If you know the area and members who very kindly came out yesterday you could see that this site is very much still within the village of Stoke Prior. In fact, I think part of it is slightly within the actual settlement boundary. What we're asking for here is a very small, low-profile house of one bedroom. It is not a, a, a grand house. It is not likely to be um, decoupled at some point uh, uh, from the agricultural equine tie, the occupational tie. <coughs> And if that was ever to happen, we would have to come back before a committee or for an officer for that decision to be made. So I'm not concerned about disproportional development in, in what is being classed technically as a countryside. I'm not concerned about the addition of the quality buildings and stabling that are going to be put on the site. I'm, I'm very happy that there will be some employment locally, not only for Carolyn the groom, but actually for people within the village who will be able to go up and uh, help and, and earn a living, which is very important within a village. Um, so we just come back down to this essential need issue. Is there an essential need for the groom to be living right next to the horses and, and these built, uh, and, and stables? And I believe there is. And we're in this catch-22 situation that if someone is trying to grow a rural enterprise, um, they can't demonstrate the need unless they're able to put in place the facilities and the conditions for them, for them to be a trusted professional um, establishment. We have letters of, letters quite clearly written from people, including Mr. Dan Bridges, who says that he intends to put his horses at this uh, site. Um, they will be foaling. He expects them to be foaling. Um, we cannot, I don't think, in good conscience, allow uh, horses of high value who will be foaling not to have the groom uh, situated very close by on site to be able to attend and, and to be able to monitor and intervene if they had to. We saw yesterday a horse uh, slightly skittish, I believe his name was Percy, he's not the brightest apparently. Um, the groom was there and able to uh, intervene and calm, calm him down. That's the sort of thing that goes on all the time when, when you are dealing with horses. 
and particularly horses of high value and horses that will be foaling. For me, the essential need is proven. We did have a mobile home then. The groom did then have a mobile home. We didn't uh, allow permission when that was applied for. One of the reasons was that I think visually it was not considered attractive. So to put something like a small bungalow there, one bedroom, which actually would act also as a conference room and offices for the enterprise, I think is perfectly acceptable. I think it will make the area look, look more attractive and actually uh, the concerns that one neighbor in particular had uh, about the visual immunity will be satisfied. It is very well screened. There is going to be extra landscaping. I would suggest we may even consider conditioning that as being promised, so why not condition it? Um, in relation to access, uh, there are some concerns about the lane. First of all, can I just say the village and the PCO are fully in support of this, uh, of this proposal. I think there's one objection, uh, which is from a neighbour who is bound, whose fields come from <coughs> three sides, and so he's perfectly entitled and he does have some legitimate concerns. One of those would be visual amenities, as I said, if we can sort out the landscaping, I'm sure we'll make sure there's no issues there. The other issue then comes back to access. There's two access points. Um, there is a school, there is a school further on up that line. Um, it does get busy at certain times. I'm not sure we could necessarily condition uh, transport movements for the manure and for the feed. Uh, but I think what I would really like to consider, would like to ask um, the committee to consider is that we say that access should be off um, point A through the farm and that the other access point should only be used for oversized vehicles. I think that's fair and I think that's proportionate. It would mean there'd be less travelling on that lane. So yes, uh, it, it, in summary, I support this. I think the essential need is demonstrated. I mean, obviously, there will be conditional uh, drainage and HRA assessments to be satisfied. If we can condition the landscaping, which will come probably in with the ecology, the bird boxes, the uh, bat boxes, the insect boxes, and if we can condition the, condition the transport access uh, through location A as a primary access and the other location as, a, as, a, as for oversized vehicles or in emergencies, then I fully support this. I mean, what, what I sort of say here is, is what I've said before. I don't like going against officer direction, especially when they're diligent officers, but I think we as elected members embedded in our communities have the right to consider, perhaps with more discretion, whether or not some, some things which are objective decisions um, should, uh, should have a little bit more consideration. And I take what officers say about local accommodation being available. We know the reality is, 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 is very different. We all have personal circumstances and family members who need um, accommodation. And I don't think it's fair to say that because there is an annex, um, that, that, that that should be used for, for a groom especially as we've discussed the essential need being the priority here. So, yes, that's, it. that's essentially it. I support this enterprise and this application. Thank you. Uh, if you could take your place back in the club to go. Thank you, Councillor <coughs> Council Harrington. Can I just say, I want to make one point and I take issue with the, with the actual report. The, the belief that um, you can manage horses like this, and I say it, uh, uh, this as somebody who owns quite a number, too many horses myself, uh, the idea that you can do this sort of enterprise and live some way adjacent from the enterprise, bearing in mind the animal welfare issues involved in this, and, you know, the financial implications, you know, fold up. I've lost more than one foal in the past, past because of not being available at the right the right time. Um, I, I, it beggars belief as far as I'm concerned. It, 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 it does not, it requires someone to be close enough, <coughs> especially when hybrid horses are, are involved in this. And well, one, we saw you, um, yesterday uh, how a, a horse was spooked very quietly by merely the rumour of Councillor Milne coming over the, uh, the hill. Um, and, and, you know, that sort of thing, you know, we're not talking about sheep or, or, or even cattle. We're talking about animals that are very highly 
Australia. And you know, it, it takes a great deal of um, work uh, and dedication to look after and maintain them in a proper manner. Anyway, are there any speakers? Councillor Bowen. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, yes, I entirely concur with your views on animal husbandry regarding horses, particularly thoroughbreds. Uh, I've had probably 30 years plus experience of looking after, handling, riding, and caring for horses in a professional capacity. And uh, I always made it a point that I was always there on the site, living on the site, where you had your stables. I think it's absolutely essential that uh, we have, have that in place. And that's why I will thoroughly support this particular, uh, ap well, particular application for the stabling and the essential workers' dwelling. It is not exactly a grand palace, is it? Small one-bedroom house, cottage, bungalow, whatever you like to call it, will hardly be, a, 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 shall we say, a target for people wanting to spend millions of pounds on it. No, it's an essential item of workplace for this particular groom and, and her management of the horses. And I think that is absolutely essential we, we allow this. And it is, if you want to get a good development in a rural area like Stoke Prior, this is a very good opportunity. Let us go for it. And I would um, propose that we allow this application to go forward. Councillor Watson. Okay. Sorry, is there a seconder? Sorry. Is there a seconder for that proposal? Councillor Watson. Thank you. Before Watson. I speak. Yeah. Oh, yes, before we. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, Yes, I just want to also support this application. I note that there are there's no drainage report, and I note that there's no manure strategy um, or a landscape plan. But I would hope that this would be conditioned um, to make it, you know, with the habitat re um, regulations assessment. Um, my parents have um, a stud in New Zealand. They breed racehorses. So again, um, you're. I truly understand and, and also support Councillor James and Bowen's comments. Um, and again, for me, it's got a tremendous amount of local support at supporting the rural economy. And as Councillor Bowen said, it's not a palace, it's actually affordable housing. It's um, very discreet. So I will be supporting the application. And I would also like to say thank you to Mrs. Pearson for her comments. Um, it's just, it's, I think she did incredibly well. And I just want to say planning can be a very emotive subject. We, uh, we experience it ourselves and, um, and it's always, um, so I really do want to thank Mrs. Pearson for her, um, yeah, for her eloquent um, explanation of the business. Thank you. Councillor Foxton. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> the proposed developments and improvements of the Equine Centre at Priory Farm is well planned, reasonable, and commendable. The application is strongly supported by three parish councils and the ward councillor. However, there's just one objection. Um, with better and more facilities, the enterprise proposes to increase the number of horses. The plan is to build an indoor arena, lean to building, further stabling, office, all the suitable agricultural appearance, and an on site living accommodation for the group. Now, yesterday we witnessed Percy um, spooked <laughs> and um, thundering back and forth. And the groom appeared, and soon we could see a calm, compliant horse being led around the field, which is lovely. The only concern with this application is the Ecology Conservation Manager states permission can only be granted if there is a scientific certainty that no phosphates nor nutrients could enter the river lug. With a significant increase in the number of horses, There'll be more manure with nutrients and phosphates. Um, the applicant needs to supply full detailed manure management plan to ensure no runoff or leaching into the river lump. 
any time. I believe the application does not comply with SS1, SS6, and possibly SD4. It's a very good application, but I propose deferment until the applicant can establish with some certainty that there will not be any adverse effect on the integrity of the River Lung and River Y Special Area Conservation. And is that a proposal, an amendment? It is. We've already got a proposal. You have a second one. Um, Councillor Norman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to the officer for the report and to the applicants. And I, I'm hugely sympathetic. It's obviously a very, very difficult and very emotional situation to be in. Um, I understand the need. I've also worked with horses in the past, and I'm aware of that. How, how important it is to have that, uh, have that professional um, presence when you have horses um, you know, in a situation like this. So I, I, I understand that completely. Um, my biggest concern is one that's just been raised, and that is the, um, the situation regarding the lung and possible drainage issues, and the fact that we have our ecologist um, objecting. Um, to me, this is, uh, this is a matter of, of, of enormous concern, and until that is addressed, I feel very uneasy and very wary of giving the go-ahead. Um, we have not heard sufficiently about the manure management. Uh, there's also possibly some Issues. I think we've heard a little bit about from the ward member about transport vehicles, large vehicles coming and going. We don't know nearly enough about that. Um, and really, until we have that, until we know that the um, that Natural England will not be objecting, I do feel very uneasy about giving this to go ahead. If we can have those reassurances, then the other elements absolutely would, would, would get my support. Um, I, I entirely see the the need there. Um, so I don't quite know where that leaves me. I'm thinking, I'm listening to other ward members and comments and perhaps a further comment from officers. But at the moment, I would like to be reassured about that particular issue, which is of such massive importance to us, particularly in the north of the county. And anything that's going to continue to compromise the state of the river, I think we should take very, very seriously. So uh, I'm, I'm on that fence at the moment, I'm afraid. Do you want to make a comment? Yes, um, perhaps to help Councillor Norman in this particular respect. Um, if members were minded to grant permission today, that's all they could do. They couldn't grant permission today because of the phosphate issue and the drainage. So you would delegate the decision to officers to determine, subject to a satisfactory drainage uh, scheme being um, agreed and cleared by our ecologists and Natural England. That is a route you could take um, and I've already prepared that actually uh, as, as a potential that you may want to go down those lines. So um, that will that will protect that, that position so that it's um, so you would be minded to grant permission but grant but given the authority to the officers to to uh, uh, deter, approve the application so to those those uh, those clearances, and that will be in conjunction usually with the chairman and local member. And does that need a specific proposal? It would need a specific. I well, it, 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 what I would suggest is proposal of secondary if they are would amend this. Mr. Chairman, I'd be very happy to accept that addition. Uh, I think it'd be a very wise addition. Yeah. And, and Councillor Watson. Yes, yes, I would too. Yeah. I think that um, a, a full drainage report, a manure strategy. And also the landscape plan you know, yeah. to mitigate. Um, okay. um, but, um, for me, it was also about the rainwater harvesting. Um, it's about to actually include that if that's possible. So, what we, at, at the eleventh hour, we did have a drainage plan in, but it couldn't be assessed. There was no time for it to be assessed. So that will be sent now for assessment. Oh, sorry. If members, if members uh, decide uh, confirm the. Um, the uh, proposal, then we would send that uh, uh, through through for its appropriate assessment and uh, to Natural England as well. If that, if that comes through, that, that that the phosphates are appropriately dealt with, you would then as part your your recommendation would also include the ability for officers to uh, attach conditions 
to the planning permission as well, to, uh, to include manure management, landscaping, etc. So those would all form part of conditions attached to the permission. There would be no need for a section 106 in this particular instance because you'd have an appropriate condition tying the um, occupation of the unit to, um, to that type of worker. Um, uh, so that, that can all be cleared by conditions attached to so, uh, but I'll, obviously I'll, we'll let the debate move forward. Councillor Wilding, then Councillor Johnson. Thanks Chair. Yeah, I just wanted to say that like Council Harrington, I wanted to support the good work that the officers have done and I don't want to go against the recommendation but I'm minded to support the the recommendation that's been made by Councillor Bowen. Uh, I recognise that in many ways this application is very similar to the one we've just put down because it's, you know, there's buildings in open countryside, there's going to be light pollution, there's going to be people moving about, there's going to be all those things. But the massive difference is, as we're discussing, that uh, there's a business going on and I, I do believe that the argument put forward by the applicant that their son is in the house is a very strong one. Uh, so I'd, I'd be minded to, um, to go along with it, providing we get all the <coughs> things which I, the officer has just suggested we could attack. Thanks. Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I think Mr. Bishop's made reference uh, from other together. I'd like clarification. Um, Will, the, will there be uh, an occupancy restriction on this building uh, if it is granted together with these recommendations? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Mill. <coughs> Thank you. Um, and I'm sorry I alarmed the horses by turning up uh, uh, for, 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 for the untoward direction. Uh, uh, just to explain that, I am. Um, I uh, started out from the village, from the pub, the Lamb Inn, which is not a pub anymore, unfortunately, and you, there's a footpath on my map. Admittedly, my map was printed 20 years ago, but I did check it, and it's still on the, on the, um, on, on, on the definitive map. Uh, and the footpath runs direct to the site, and I thought, oh gosh, that will only take me 10 minutes, but, uh, at the very most. And uh, blow me, I got uh, 50 yards along it, and I was stopped, stopped by a local who said, um, the, the footpath, Henry Rich Johnson has stumped it out. Uh, and uh, so I turned around and I had to go a long way around, maybe late, but never mind. I, I then afterwards had another look at this footpath after everybody had gone, and, um, uh, and, 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 sh and sure enough, it, it was, it was in inaccessible, it was over ground, I couldn't get on it. But um, I, I carried on around the southern part of the applicant's uh, holding. And uh, you, um, the, the footpath there is, is, is sound, and it runs past a large clamp of horse manure. And uh, I don't think any, any other members saw this large clamp of horse manure. Uh, and I thought, oh gosh, that's, that's hmm, a bit of a concern. So I, 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 I walked on back round down into the village again and saw that uh, where, where, where the stream runs uh, between uh, the old post office and the, and the village green, is sort of rather, rather right in line with this this, this clamp of horse manure. So I, I'd be very, very, very pleased to support uh, Councillor Watson's uh, recommendation that if uh, this um, this is approved, that there is a very robust uh, uh, manure management plan. Um, I don't have as clear an understanding of what the phosphate implications are of horse manure. Uh, obviously, the, most of the discussion is about chicken manure, but. Uh, uh, it is a concern, and I share that with Councillor Councillor Norman very, very strongly. Thank you. Can, can I tell you that, that the phosphate is much lower in the water than the poultry? But is it maybe <laughs> ammonia or other concern, yeah. considerations? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, uh, can, are there any other councillors now that uh, wish to speak? We perhaps the officers will give the final. Before I ask the yes. Matter. Thank you, Chairman. Um, obviously, officers do not dispute the need for a dwelling, but obviously they, they identify there was other dwellings which were which were capable of, of accommodation. From members' perspective, I've here today, you know, there have there was an objection to to the application, but members 
from what I've heard, if members consider that the need for a new dwelling has been demonstrated and no other dwelling is available in the area. So I think that's, that's your reasoning behind your decision, I would suggest, if that's what comes forward. And the uh, recommendation uh, or the proposal should read in, uh, something in the lines of a delegate to officers to approve with conditions subject to satisfactory conclusion of a drainage strategy in conjunction with the chairman and local member. Conditions include the, the, the um, condition of economy, manure, management, etc. Thank you, Chairman. Right, thank you. Can I just say that there are two aspects of that. There's the need for a house. There is the need for a house in the adjacent community, but there's also in many cases, and this is one, where there is need for a house to be adjacent to the actual enterprise itself and in close proximity. And I'm quite clear on that, that that is necessary. Uh, the local member, Councillor Harrington. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you all for your comments. Um, I, I'm, as, a, as, as I've said, I continue to support this. Um, I, I note what Councillor Wilder said. I think it's actually quite different from the previous application in the sense that this is already a site that had a lot of activity. There are, there are people working on it on a, on a regular basis. Uh, it is quite close, even though it is outside technically of the settlement map, really is, it is very close in field to the village. Um, and the only other thing I'd just like to direct you from uh, Mr. Bishop on is. The, the issues I raised in relation to access being um, potentially conditioned and landscaping being conditioned, can that be? Can that be? We can discuss that with you as part of our conditioning of the. Uh, Thank you very much. Right. So fully support this, and I come back to the point that a rural worker who has had thirty odd years in this business deserves, uh, you know, the comfort and privacy of uh, of her own dwelling on site, not only for the essential need, but just for her, you know, her own human rights and dignity. Right, we have a proposal uh, and it's been seconded. Can I ask those in favour of the proposal? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, that's your name, so I don't need to ask for Can we move on fairly quickly? We have two further applications here. They're here by Dean of being for members of staff. Um, and we'll move on to item eight. There are no speakers registered, so we we'll go through that. Uh, 333 Burden Drive, Barter Street, Heron. Okay, Councillor Andrew, I'm forgetting the. Can I uh, welcome Mr. Rawls, who's here for the first time, I believe. I am, yes. I guess. Yes. Um, they're a pretty intimidating lot. Uh, <laughs> and can I ask that you make your presentation? Yes, I will. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay, um, this application relates to 33 Burden Drive in Barter Street. Uh, it's reported to committee as the applicant is a member of staff. Um, you can see from the first slide, uh, the red star, the application site is located to the northern extent of the village. Uh, the proposal is for a two-storey side extension with an existing lean to to be demolished. Um, it, as I said, it sits within uh, an existing suburban housing estate known as Wilcroft Park. If we can move on to the second slide, please. Okay, so you can see from the block plan at the top, um, it's a semi-detached dwelling. It sits within a, a, a perimeter block of housing, um, with, with the houses all generally fronting the public highway. Uh, the extension would lie to the side, um, and so the impact on the neighbour at number 32, which you can see to the to the northeast of, of the red edge site, has uh, been carefully considered. Um, officers consider there'll be no significant adverse effects arising on their amenity. We can move on to the next slide, please. Okay, so this, this is just showing you the existing plan and elevation of property. Um, you can see on the top left of the elevation, that's, that's the uh, front of the house. Uh, the lean-to to the left would be demolished. Um, 
note the entrance to the side at the minute, so I think we'd be introducing a new sort of front front door to the property. Um, the house design is fairly typical for the area. It's a three-bed semi-detached. Um, if we can move on to the next slide, please. Okay, so this is the proposed plan for elevations. Um, just a few points to make. Uh, the two-story inside extension is obviously shown top left, the north elevation, that's fronting the road. It's in proportion to the existing house. It's set down, it's set back, thereby compliant with the uh, general principles applying to house extensions. Um, it's got a subservient appearance. Uh, in terms of the benefits of development, we, we create an additional bedroom, improve our existing housing stock uh, in a sustainable location. Uh, access is maintained to the rear with a footway down the side. Uh, parking provision, free cars would still be available by a virtue of some extra hard standing at the front. Uh, in terms of construction materials, those would match, you'd have matching brick and a matching concrete tile. Uh, next slide, please. Just a few photos then. Um, bottom is, is the front aspect of the semi detached property. Um, as I said, this is in brick and we're a large concrete tile roof. Top right, so that's the rear elevation of the property. And top left is just to show you the relationship to the house at number 32 that I mentioned. So I guess the key thing there is um, that there'd be sufficient distance maintained to, to the immediate outlook of that property. And we'd have no upper floor windows in the side gable overlooking the private garden area. Um, as set out in the officer report, uh, the recommendation is for approval subject to conditions. I'm happy to answer any questions if, if they arise. Okay, <coughs> we'll um, have the local member. Thank you, yeah, thank you, Chair. Obviously, this is brought to committee because it's a staff member. Um, there's been no objections to it. The parish council fully support it. So do I. So I think. That is it, to be honest. And obviously, please put the back box up. Okay. Well, the box, should I say. <laughs> so Can, how, thank you. Right, are there any speakers? Or? Can someone make a... a Councillor Bill. Look, I was just going to prepare, prepare so we go straight to the boat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody propose the... So, the officers recommendation, perhaps... On the officer's recommendation, yes, indeed. Oh, you've done that. And that's seconded by the council. Right. So, uh, as no one wishes to debate this particular issue, uh, can we go to the vote? Those in favour? Okay. No one against? Then that is carried. Okay. Can we now move on to the final? So, Miss Brooks is going to make the presentation. Well, again, this is here, here by dint of being an officer's application. Proposals at 13 Graft Sutton, St Nicholas, Hereford. Um, I do note that uh, Councillor. Councillor Guthrie is the local member, but she is not available today, but she strongly supports the application, can I just point out. Anyway, a proposal includes a two-storey side extension comprising of a garage and ground floor level and, and a new principal bedroom at the first floor level, with a further single-storey section to provide workshop space in the garage. Also proposed is a balcony with a glass balustrade um, up to the rear of the principal bedroom. Can I ask you to make a presentation? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, members. Um, so the site is depicted here by the Red Star. It's found within Sutton St. Nicholas itself, within the urban area, also located within the um, settlement boundary. Um, please can I have the next slide? So the property itself is, is two-storey. Um, it's um, located at the end of the Corby sac. You can see to the north uh, there is a public right of way that runs down the side um, and that gives access um, out to the road and um, access to facilities such as the church. Um, the um, extension proposed is located also to the northeast side, um, two storey as mentioned. Um, and as you can see at the cartilage of the property, 
there, there's quite a, a substantial size um, to the rear end of the slide, um, and therefore uh, it's sort of, it fits in nice within the cartilage of the um, property. Um, next slide, please. So here, um, the top image provides a street view, so you can see um, um, the public right of way, the distancing to the neighbouring property to the side. Um, the extension proposed would be uh, in cladding and tiles to match. Um, I should have mentioned on the previous slide, obviously, that there is the open fields <coughs> that you can see behind, um, which alleviates concerns for overlooking, um, particularly with, with regards to the um, um, balcony. Um, here are the extension, uh, the elevations, so you can see that it is a subservient addition. Um, it is um, set back from the principal elevation. It is, um, it's, it, the ridge height is reduced from the um, host dwelling. Um, further off street parking is provided within the garage, um, but it also there, there remains parking to the front um, of the extension. Um, so there is a distance of um, 8.25 metres from the proposed extension to the, the house, um, the neighbouring property to the north, um, which in my opinion um, alleviates concerns for overlooking um, and overshadowing, and that is across the public right of way as well. Um, so it's my recommendation to approve this application um, with conditions, which is um, time constraints and um, in accordance with the drawings provided. Right, well, thank you very much. You. Uh, can, can I add that originally has stated councillor the local member is unavailable, but strongly supports the application. Councillor Andrews. Uh, just have to say I support and I propose that we go straight to the vote. Okay, is that seconded? Councillor Mill. Right, can I have uh, those in favour of the... Do you want to speak? Do you want to speak, sorry? Uh, well, well, I was only going to say, I would have nicely a little bit churlish. Um, but uh, there, were, there were no supporting documents, not even a biodiversity or climate change statement with this. And I, I think as a staff member, setting a good example is a good idea, but uh, that's just, just, a, just a comment, if, a plea. Can we have the biodiversity and climate change statements? At least, if we can, sometimes. Yeah. But, but I have no objection. Were you seconding it? I'm uh, seconding it. I, you asked me to make a comment, and that's, that's the yeah, comment yeah, I made. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So that is covered. Yes. You know, the little checklists. Yeah. Okay. Just a checklist. Just a checklist. Right. Can those in favour of please please show? That's unanimous. Okay. Well, thank you all for your attendance, and uh, we look forward to the next meeting. Hello. Is the live stream installed? Is the...